Welcome back to Mythos Amit Raj. I'm Amit, your host, and this is episode 3 of our 30 episodes journey through ancient Philippines. Over the past two days, we've explored the sophisticated kingdoms of ancient Filipinos and traced the Austronesian migration that brought them here 4,000 years ago. But today, we're going even deeper, tens of thousands of years deeper. Today we're solving one of Southeast Asia's greatest archaeological mysteries, the Taban Caves. Hey history lovers, quick favor before we start, if you enjoy today's video, please help me reach 500 likes and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing historical stories. Picture this, it's 1962, a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Robert Fox is exploring caves in Palawan, Philippines. They're digging through layers of earth and sediment when suddenly they find something extraordinary, a skull. But not just any skull, this one is ancient, really ancient. When they carbon date it, the results shock the scientific community. 47,000 years old, that's right, 47,000 years. To put that in perspective, this skull is more than 10 times older than the Austronesian migration we discussed yesterday. It's older than the pyramids of Egypt by 40,000 years. It predates agriculture, cities and written language. This is the Taban man, and his discovery changed everything we thought we knew about the Philippines. But here's the mystery. Who were these people? Where did they come from? What happened to them? And most intriguingly, are they ancestors of modern Filipinos or did they vanish without a trace? Today, we're diving into the caves to find answers. Let's start with the discovery itself. The Taban Caves are located on Lipan Point in Quezon, Palawan, one of the Philippines' most remote and beautiful islands. The caves overlook the South China Sea, and for thousands of years, they provided shelter to early humans living in the region. In the early 1960s, Dr. Robert Fox, an American anthropologist working with the National Museum of the Philippines, began systematic excavations of the caves. He wasn't the first to explore them. Locals had known about the caves for generations, but he was the first to conduct scientific archaeological work there. The Taban complex isn't just one cave. It's a network of over 200 caves and rock shelters spread across the limestone cliffs. But the most significant finds came from Taban Cave itself, which is why the entire complex bears its name. In 1962, Fox's team made the discovery that would make headlines around the world. Deep in the archaeological layers of the cave, they found fragments of a skull, specifically parts of a frontal bone, a piece of a jaw, and some teeth. The bones were fossilized, meaning they had been underground for an extraordinarily long time. When the samples were sent for carbon dating, the results were stunning approximately 47,000 years old. Some estimates even suggest the remains could be as old as 50,000 years. This made the Taban Man one of the oldest human remains ever discovered in Southeast Asia at that time. But the skull wasn't the only finding. The caves yielded thousands of other artifacts, stone tools, animal bones, shells used as tools and ornaments, and evidence of fire use. These weren't just random caves where someone died. This was a living site, a home, occupied by early humans for thousands of years. So who was Taban Man? First, let's clarify something. Despite the name, we don't actually know if this individual was male or female. The fragmentary nature of the remains makes it difficult to determine sex conclusively. Taban Man is just the name that stuck, but it could just as easily have been Taban Woman. What we do know is this person lived during the late Pleistocene era, the last Ice Age. 
the world was very different then. Sea levels were much lower, by as much as 120 meters in some areas, because so much water was locked up in glaciers. This meant that many of today's islands in Southeast Asia were connected by land bridges. The Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, much of what's now separated by ocean was part of a larger landmass. Palawan itself was likely connected to Borneo. This created what scientists call Sunderland, a massive peninsula extending from mainland Asia that early humans could walk across. So the people who became Taban Man didn't necessarily sail to the Philippines. They might have walked, following game animals and edible plants across the landscape. They were hunter-gatherers, living off wild resources, hunting deer, wild pigs, and other animals, gathering fruits, roots, and shellfish from the coasts. Physically, scientists believe Taban Man belonged to a population related to today's Negrito peoples, the Eta in Luzon, the Ati in the Visayas, and similar groups throughout Southeast Asia. These are the indigenous peoples who were living in the Philippines when the Austronesians arrived thousands of years later. The stone tools found in the caves are simple but effective. Flake tools made by striking one stone against another to create sharp edges. These were used for cutting, scraping and processing food and materials. The technology represents what's called the Middle Paleolithic or Middle Stone Age, a period before the development of more sophisticated tool-making techniques. So what was life like for the people living in Taban Caves 47,000 years ago? Let's try to reconstruct it. The caves provided excellent natural shelter. They were elevated, which protected inhabitants from flooding. They faced the sea, offering views of approaching weather and potential threats. The limestone formations created multiple chambers, providing space for different activities and family groups. Archaeological evidence shows that people used fire regularly. Charcoal deposits and burned bones throughout the cave indicate controlled use of fire for cooking, warmth, and probably protection from animals. This is significant because it shows these early humans had mastered one of humanity's most important technologies. Their diet was varied. Animal bones found in the caves include remains of deer, wild pigs, monkeys, and even rhinoceros. Yes, rhinoceros once lived in the Philippines during the Ice Age. These large animals were hunted or scavenged for their meat, bones and hides. But meat wasn't everything. The abundance of marine shells shows they harvested seafood, mollusks, crabs and fish from the nearby seas. Some shells show signs of being used as tools or ornaments, suggesting these people had a sense of aesthetics and personal adornment. Plant materials don't preserve well in archaeological sites, but we can assume they gathered wild fruits, nuts, roots and leafy plants. A purely meat diet is unsustainable, so plant foods would have been essential. The caves were occupied repeatedly over thousands of years. This wasn't a place people visited once. Archaeological layers show continuous or repeated occupation meaning multiple generations of these early humans returned to these caves, perhaps seasonally, perhaps permanently. It was a good location, sheltered, near both forest and sea resources, defensible. Burials in the caves suggest these people cared for their dead. Several burial sites have been found where bodies were intentionally placed in specific positions. This indicates some form of belief system or respect for the deceased, one of the markers of complex human behavior. Now here's where it gets really interesting and really mysterious. If people were living in the Philippines 47,000 years ago, what happened to them? 
Are they the ancestors of modern Filipinos, or did they disappear? This question has fascinated scientists for decades, and the answer is complicated. For a long time, there were two main theories. The first theory suggested that these early inhabitants were completely replaced by the Austronesian migrants who arrived around 4,000 years ago. According to this theory, the Taban people and their descendants either died out or were pushed out by the new arrivals, leaving little to no genetic legacy. The second theory proposed that the early inhabitants interbred with the Austronesians, meaning modern Filipinos are a mixture of both populations. So which theory is correct? Thanks to modern genetic studies, we now have some answers, and they're fascinating. DNA studies of modern Filipinos show that the majority of Filipino genetic ancestry comes from Austronesian populations. The languages, the cultural practices, the physical characteristics, most of this traces back to the Austronesian migration from Taiwan 4,000 years ago. However, and this is crucial, there is also genetic evidence of older populations. Studies show that some Filipino groups, particularly the Negrito peoples like the Aeta, carry genetic markers that indicate much deeper roots in the region. These markers suggest continuity with populations that lived in Southeast Asia long before the Austronesians arrived. In other words, the Taban people didn't completely vanish. Their descendants survived, though their genetic and cultural influence diminished as the Austronesian population grew and spread. It's likely that some interbreeding occurred, meaning most Filipinos today carry a small amount of genetic heritage from these ancient populations. The Negrito peoples represent the strongest connection to the pre-Austronesian inhabitants. They're often referred to as the Philippines' indigenous peoples, and genetic studies confirm they've been in the region far longer than the Austronesian-speaking groups. The Taban Caves have yielded more than just the famous skull. Let me tell you about some of the other incredible discoveries made there. One of the most significant finds is the Taban Cave Jar burials. These are burial jars dating to much later periods, around 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, well after the original Taban man. These jars contained human remains and were placed in the caves as part of burial rituals. This shows the caves remained important sacred or ceremonial sites for thousands of years. The presence of these jar burials indicates a significant cultural shift. The people who created them were likely early Austronesian settlers or their descendants, and they had developed more complex burial practices than the simple inhumations of the Paleolithic period. Dr. Fox's team also discovered the Duyong Cave, part of the Taban complex, where they found a burial site containing a body in a wooden coffin shaped like a boat. The coffin was dated to around 700 CE, making it one of the oldest boat coffins found in Southeast Asia. This reflects the maritime culture that would define Filipino civilization. Even in death, the journey continued by boat. Stone tools from various periods have been found throughout the complex. The evolution of these tools tells a story of technological development from simple flake tools 47,000 years ago to more sophisticated blades and points in later periods. Jewelry and ornaments made from shells, animal teeth, and stones show that these ancient peoples had aesthetic sensibilities. They adorned themselves, which suggests self-awareness and social complexity. The sheer number of artifacts, over 40,000 specimens recovered, makes Taban one of the most important archaeological sites in Southeast Asia. Each artifact adds a piece to the puzzle of early human life in the Philippines. So why does Taban matter? 
Why should we care about a 47,000-year-old skull from a cave in Palawan? Because Taban rewrites the history of the Philippines. It proves that human presence in these islands goes back not thousands, but tens of thousands of years. The Philippines wasn't empty land waiting for the Austronesians. It was home to people who had lived, thrived, and adapted here for millennia. Taban challenges us to think about identity and ancestry in more complex ways. Filipino heritage isn't just Austronesian, it's also connected to these much older populations who survived the Ice Age, adapted to dramatic climate changes and left their genetic and cultural marks on the region. For Filipino Negrito communities, Taban provides scientific validation of their deep historical roots. These aren't recent arrivals or marginal populations. They represent the oldest continuous human presence in the Philippines. And from a global perspective, Taban contributes to our understanding of human migration out of Africa. These early humans successfully navigated and settled one of the world's most challenging environments, a landscape of islands, seas, and rainforests. They were our ancestors, and they were remarkable. In episode four, we're diving into something incredible, the gold of ancient Philippines. We're talking about the Surigao treasure, intricate artifacts that rival anything in Asia, and why the archipelago was known as the land of gold. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. I'm Amit, this is Mythos Amit Raj, and remember, the deepest mysteries often lie in the oldest stones, waiting for us to uncover them and tell their stories. Before you go, if this archeological mystery fascinated you, hit that like button right now. Subscribe to Mythos Amit Raj because we've got 27 more episodes of incredible ancient Filipino history coming your way. Turn on notifications so you catch every episode. Drop a comment below. Tell me, had you heard about Taban Man before this video? What other archaeological mysteries would you like us to explore? I read every comment, and your suggestions help shape future content and share this video with anyone fascinated by archaeology, human origins, or the mysteries of our ancient past. Let's spread knowledge about these incredible discoveries. All right, see you in next episode for episode four. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and never stop digging into history.